I would support the BBC and support its independence. Do we become critical of news coverage? Yes. I do become critical of news coverage. I, we do challenge where we think they've been grotesquely unfair to us. Jeremy Corbyn, hello. How are you? Good, yourself? Grant. So, this arts announcement from the Labour Party, tell us about it. Well, arts are central to our lives, music is central to our lives, and our children need poetry, they need music, they need imagination, and they need to be um, given the space to do it. Our schools are underfunded, most schools have given up on teaching music at all. Many kids go through school with never getting a chance to learn any kind of musical instrument. And many children never get to go to the theatre, never get to go to a gallery, and too often in their town their libraries have been closed. And so what we're doing is saying this as a whole issue that must be addressed. So we're putting a billion pounds into uh, an art and culture fund, which will help to fund uh, obviously theatres and so on that need some grant aid and support but will also through a pupil arts premium help to fund music education in schools and I think it is a good investment and will actually improve educational outcomes as well as improve the sense of community because any society learns through its history, they learn through the artistic expression, they learn through writing, through poetry and through music and uh, Communities that have come together, I was making examples of brass bands, steel bands, other kinds of groups, and young people are naturally very creative. Unfortunately, they don't often get the chance or the space to be creative, and I think they should. On Friday, you announced on Question Time that you would be neutral in a second Brexit referendum. Would you be able to tell us how you would vote in that second referendum? No, because I'm going to be an honest broker that will help to make sure that we do have a credible deal in which we leave the EU, credible deal which will protect our trade relationship with Europe, which is very important. Half of all trade in Britain is with uh, customers in Europe and vice versa. So if we don't protect that, then immediately on leaving, there's going to be problems because uh, we'll go on to World Trade Organization mm -hmm. conditions. And it will also help to protect the Good Friday Agreement and the peace in Ireland. And we'll put that alongside Remain in a referendum within six months. The alternative is Boris Johnson and either crashing out or his idea of a trade deal is with the United States, Donald Trump, where they made it very clear in return for a trade deal with Britain, they want access to our public services, they want privatisation of our health service so American companies can come in and run it and they can sell their medicines to us. We'll buy medicines anywhere around the world as we need them, but we'll buy them because we'll negotiate on behalf of the National Health Service. Will you give your cabinet a free vote? On the second referendum? The Cabinet uh, will discuss that when we, we get there, but the issue has to be of bringing our country together. Our country has become very divided over Brexit since 2016. We cannot go on forever debating Brexit, and I think this is a way forward. This is a sensible and mature way. We can no longer keep on defining people as to how they voted in 2016. There are communities that are poor and up against it who voted leave. There are communities that are poor and up against it who voted remain. They're not at each other's throats. They're concerned about where their future lies. So a government that will bring an end to that debate by giving a final choice to the people, but also a government that will invest in the future and end austerity in Britain. What do you think is more important? The policies in your manifesto or the man Jeremy Corbyn being in number 10? The policies being implemented are absolutely crucial. It's not about me, it's not a presidential election. It's an election in which uh, Labour candidates will be elected to Parliament on a manifesto that I'm very proud of. That manifesto has been put together by thousands of people in their own way through our Labour Party, through trade unions and through community organisations. And it will be transformative. It will be transformative because we'll invest in good jobs for the future, high skilled jobs, we'll end zero hours contracts, we'll deal with the inequalities and injustice that comes from universal credit. It will be very different but it will be a government determined to give real opportunities to everybody in Britain and every part of Britain. If you're unsuccessful in this general election, would you accept the time has come for someone else to lead the Labour Party? And if so, who would be your pick to succeed you? We're going to be successful in this election, and my total focus is on being successful course, in this election. Of course. So beyond that, wait. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, a big part of your manifesto, public ownership. Mm -hmm. One of the few things in this country that is owned by the British public at the moment is the BBC. Mm -hmm. And a lot of your supporters recently have been critical of the BBC. Mm -hmm. I wonder what your views are. 
on the BBC. And I want the BBC to, to retain its independence as a public service broadcaster. It is not a state broadcaster and never should be a state broadcaster. I don't want state broadcasting corporations and I think the basic chart of the BBC is right and uh, I would support the BBC and support its independence. Do we become critical of news coverage? Yes. I do become critical of news coverage. I, we do challenge where we think they've been grotesquely unfair to us. We do challenge. It doesn't mean I've ever challenged the existence mm. of the BBC. And I think as a baseline for good quality broadcasting, it should always be there. The BBC is, of course, not just a news broadcaster. It is a, a music, it has a series of music channels. It has documentary making, it has filmmaking. And I think it's got massive growth and potential within it. And uh, so in the BBC, I see something that is valuable to society but obviously in public life if you think somebody is being unfair in the way they're reporting what's going on unfair in their editorializing then it's perfectly reasonable to object to it a lot of the artists here have been singing the praises of the BBC help them in their careers mm. um, earlier this week at your manifesto launch when Laura Kunzberg stood up to ask you a question she was booed by some of your supporters what do you what do you think of that a very small number of people made slight sort of booing noises and I immediately intervened and said, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that to any journalist, whoever it is. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's the end of the matter. I do not allow people to do that. Jeremy Corwin, thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you.